If you're the type of traveller who prefers to leave the tours and cruises and go your own way, from local trains to hitting the open road, we've got everything you need to know. Planning and researching are where the fun and excitement of holidaying begins. If you want to DIY your holiday, our well-travelled experts have everything you need, from what to book first, what not to forget, and tips for having the most authentic experiences. Hi, my name's Charlotte. I am a Europe and UK expert, and I'm with Flight Centre. Uh, hi, I'm Nathan. I'm a travel expert at Flight Centre. When starting to plan a UK trip, I would probably consider the season first. So are you a winter person or a summer person? Do you like festivals or do you want to go see the Christmas markets and then work out a rough itinerary and then work on flights? So find your in and out point, uh, find what dates work for you and book flights first, probably. It's important to book insurance at the same time you book flights because the minute you book the flights with the insurance at the same time, you're going to be covered throughout anything happening. So if you were to leave the office and the worst happens, you're going to be covered from that very moment. When talking about budget, it's a really difficult question to answer because it depends on the person. It depends on how luxurious you want the trip to be and where you're going as well, um, as to how expensive everything is going to be. Going to Iceland is very different to going to Italy. So it depends on a lot of different factors. I think a good budget would be an average maybe about 1500 for flights, uh, maybe $200 a night of accommodation, maybe 150 if you're staying in a couple per person a night, uh, and then everyday activities, depends on how much you like to eat or how much luxury you like to spend, but maybe about $50 per day. Personally, I'm not great at budgeting, uh, but when you're trying to budget on a Europe trip, definitely try and get uh, rail passes, which give you a bit more flexibility. So if you need to make a change, it doesn't actually cost you too much. Try and go to markets and find out where the locals eat. Go to m and in the UK or go to a, a supermarket, which is really good. And try and do your research and plan for the trip in advance. It's amazing how much that will save you in the long run. A tip for making the best out of your money before you go would definitely having everything pre-booked. So whether it be hotels to make sure you have the exact room, the exact place you want to be. Uh, museums as well. Some of them are free, which is amazing. Definitely do your research to see which are free, which you have to pay for. Uh, and even seeing some shows, you want to make sure the dates you're going, because it may be for two, three days or a week, you want to make sure the week you're going that you do have a seat in that uh, little amphitheatre so you can watch the amazing show. Uh, book accommodation as soon as you can, especially in the places that you want to see most. Uh, so you'd hate to get to Paris and then not have anywhere to stay and not have the rest of the trip booked. Um, so definitely flights, insurance and as much accommodation as you can first. Best value for money. Uh, Greece would probably be at the top of my list. Uh, I'm currently booking a trip for myself to go to Santorini. I've had a look at over the 300 hotels that they've got there and just what the inclusions they've got with the breakfast, the amazing infinity pools that some hotels have that you can't, and that view that you can't get anywhere else. Definitely the amount you're spending is definitely going to be worth it. If you're into history, Europe is definitely the place for you. Every city, every country is going to be different. They have a different history, a different civilization. Hands down, the best place to go is Rome. I'm very biased, but you have thousands of years of history in a very small space. And it's one of the only places that you can see a Roman aqueduct through a McDonald's. So it's, it's a fantastic place. Yeah, also a guaranteed bathroom. Airline traveling to Europe. Uh, the top three would probably be Emirates, Qatar and Singapore. Singapore you can even turn into an amazing beautiful stopover. You can with the other airlines as well, but I just uh, a bit biased towards Singapore myself. Some of the benefits of doing a stopover is that it breaks up the trip a lot. So especially if you have little kids or if you have mobility issues as well, it breaks up the trip. You're not sitting down for as long and it adds a bit of excitement to the trip as well to the start you can get something a little bit different you can go to a market in Singapore or you can go to Disneyland before you start the Europe trip 
Some health and safety tips to think of is uh, when you're traveling post COVID especially, is to make sure you're up to date with all the travel requirements because every country can be quite different. Make sure that you're taking the right health precautions and get travel insurance before you go. Know what the travel insurance covers you for. Definitely talk to your travel agent and always wash your hands. Post COVID, definitely you have to wear a mask anyway, so make sure you've got one. But uh, if you like to be a bit fashionable, maybe bring more than one, a couple per outfit. One thing when traveling, obviously you have to make sure you're up to date with all the COVID restrictions for the country, but you can't forget how important the visa information and restrictions are. Make sure your passport's valid six months coming back into Australia, as well as one thing I like is if you are traveling, maybe have a translation app. So if anything does go wrong, you can speak the language or read signs just by using your phone camera.